So if you all follow me on Twitter, you might have seen me posting a lot more charts and graphs about memory usage. And the reason I'm kind of getting into that rabbit hole is because I noticed a lot of my Next.js applications just start eating up memory over time. And I think a lot of this is because of the image optimization with Sharp, but it kind of just got me thinking of like, should we be trying to achieve more in this industry by using less? And by less, I mean like less code, less dependencies, less complexity. Now I will say a lot of the stuff I do at work is related to AWS and cloud computing. We do like serverless, DynamoDB, Dynamo Streams to Elasticsearch, infrastructure as code with Terraform. And it's like the complexity sometimes starts to get so much greater than the actual thing you're trying to deploy out to production, right? Which kind of reminded me of this ideology of like, can we achieve more? Either that's like more performance, more features, more whatever, by doing less or writing less or depending on less. So here's Icon Generator. This is like one of my first real applications I de deployed with Next.js that actually gets me, I think, $1,000 a month from revenue, which is pretty nice. But you can see here it's hovering around like 400 megabytes of usage, which kind of seems like a lot of uh, usage. Uh, maybe there's a bunch of caching going on behind the scenes, which is why it's like so high. But I was seeing kind of similar performance with other things I was deploying, right? So for example, here's another application that I used to have in Next.js. It's like one page. And I was inspecting the memory usage, which I don't think I have it anymore with the Next.js version. But we can look at something else that's also one page, my WDC starter kit. Okay, this used to be in Next.js as well. And at times I saw it go all the way up to like 300, 400 megabytes of memory. And it just kind of got me thinking of like, why is it that a single static page needs so much memory? Because it really shouldn't. And so what I did is I refactored the starter kit to instead use Hona. And then also I have another application that I kind of worked on. This used to be in Next.js as well. Saw the same things where like the memory usage just kept getting higher. I refactor this, use Hona and Bun, okay? So let's kind of look at the difference, right? So this is now hovering about 150. What you're looking at right here is the Hona implementation, I'm pretty sure. And if we go over to Knowles Glass with Node, let's look at the memory usage of this, hovering around 105. Granted, there's not much traffic hitting this site at all, but this is better. It's not great. I mean, I still think this is quite a lot of memory usage for a single application with very, very little traffic. Here's bun, you can see that when I first deploy it, it's like 44 megs. And then again, that just slowly starts climbing and climbing and climbing. And then I did a deployment that went back down to something lower and then it starts climbing and climbing and climbing. And granted in the grand scheme of things, like railway only charges you like not that much money for like memory usage. But overall, when I have like this many projects deployed out and all of them slowly start creeping up in memory usage, either because it's like a garbage collection issue or there's memory leaks inside of Next.js or inside of the services, I don't know if Bun's production ready or not. It just got me thinking of like, why not just do something else? Why not just use Go, use Rust, use C. If this is the state with JavaScript, um, like why not just use something that's actually like performant from out of the box? So some of the investigation I've been kind of looking into is using Go. Go is another thing that I've used on my channel a couple times. I kind of just played around with it, but now I'm at the point where I actually might go more uh, all in on Go at this point. Now, granted, I just released a starter kit that uses Next.js, and I still think Next.js is a great way of like, you're a solopreneur or small team, you just need to get something out there. Yeah, you can move very, very fast with Next.js. And I would still probably, if someone came to me and said, hey, I need something built, I would probably use Next.js. But in the grand scheme of things, I think we need to have a, a philosophy or a mindset change a little bit and try to achieve more with less. So let's look at the project that I refactored to Go. And I believe it's called, um, if I go to the promo site, I have two implementations of a mailing list. Okay, So one is in Go and Fiber, and one is in Bun and Hona. So let's look at the Bun and Hona one. If you go over here, this is eating up 150 megabytes of memory for a very, very simple page where I, literally I'm seeing this across the board. So maybe this is a railway issue. Maybe railway has overhead to your services. But let's look at the Go and Fiber implementation. You're going to be blown away. This is using 11 megabytes of memory. When I first deploy it, it uses 6, and then it goes up to 11 megabytes of memory, which is good because A, how much do I get charged for running a service that's 11 megabytes of memory? I get charged pennies on Railway. Versus Bun and Hona, I'm going to get charged more. 
Now, secondly, the code between the Go implementation and the Bun implementation is very similar, right? There's like, it's almost like the same code, just written in different syntax. And so if you are trying to get more performance by writing the same code, why wouldn't you just do that? Okay, so that's kind of like what I'm doing here. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. Now, you can even get this lower. People keep saying that I should be using the standard library in Go instead of Fiber. But the point is, is like you're able to achieve this type of performance in this low memory usage out of the box with not even having to thinking about caching. Like I'm not caching anything. Like I don't even have to think about CDN or caching or any uh, optimizations. Like this literally just doesn't use memory on your machine. But let's be honest, I think the Go implementation could probably serve a lot more requests per second than anything in the Node or JavaScript ecosystem. So now that I have you hooked with this very obvious like argument of why you should probably just use Go, I mean, like, look at this, I'll even zoom in for you. Look how nice that is, six megabytes. The other argument for Go is that you can basically achieve a fully functioning REST API with bringing in no external dependencies. Okay? You can just use the things that are built into the Go standard library and build out a REST API. Now, granted, with Button and Hona, I mean, you don't have that many dependencies, but again, you're like depending on Bun, which in my opinion, it's, it's too early to like really adopt it. I'm sure it has like underlying issues. And honestly, I think it just needs more time to cook. Um, I would probably still use Node on anything serious, but on side projects, you just want it to be fast. Yeah, I mean, probably use Bun and Hona. But again, like look at this comparison. You might not care. And I think that's the point I'm trying to drive at is you should care. The same amount of code in terms of developer experience. In fact, I think Go actually has a really good developer experience. Like you literally can just like save a file that auto formats for you automatically. You don't have to install Prettier. Again, doing more with less. It's built into the Go standard library, like format stuff for you already. Bringing in these packages, you don't have to like right click on anything and say import. Go will just automatically import stuff when you save files. Some things that are built into the box that you're not gonna have with Next.js is channels. So if you have used Node, you'll notice that if you have a longer running thing that really eats into CPU time, it's gonna block the entire thread in Node.js. So if you imagine you have like a for loop inside like a backend endpoint that does like a million records, that has to loop through a million records, you're potentially gonna block every single request from hitting your Node API. Is that something that you actually want to think about? Probably not, right? With Go, you have channels. And channels basically spin things up and run them in their own threads. Now, I do think it's more nuanced to that, um, but everything runs in its own thread. So you don't have to worry about like me blocking the entire thread for every API request because you have these constructs that are built directly into Go that allow you to just like push things into a channel and process them. Now, granted, stuff like PHP Laravel has like queues built in, which I think achieves something similar. Elixir and Erlang is also really great with that type of stuff. Another thing I want to show you is if you've ever deployed Node.js to production, in particular to like serverless, most of the times they're bringing in like ES build so they can bundle your Node application, like actually bundle your API code and get that deployed out so it's not as large. So again, you're bringing in more external things that are not baked into JavaScript or TypeScript itself just so that you can get this stuff running on AWS, which I think is a code smell. I think it's a smell with the design of the ecosystem with TypeScript, with JavaScript. And instead, let me just show you this, this Docker file, okay? I have this Docker file which runs through, it builds up this Go binary. And again, when Go finishes running, it just gives you one single binary with all the code that's necessary inside of that binary. Okay, so with this multi-stage Docker file, I build a Go binary and I also have like my public assets. And then I create a Docker image from scratch. Scratch, if you don't know what the scratch is, is basically an image that has nothing on it. So it's like zero bytes. It's, it's super small, super performant. And so I can just grab that node binary and my public assets and put them in this empty Docker image and then run that binary. And at the end of this, like when you actually build this, we're talking like maybe a megabyte or less of how big this image is because it only contains those two things. Which is nice because this is literally built into Go. It compiles your code into a single executable, which in Node.js, like I'm just tired of like having to deal with ES build. I'm tired of dealing with Webpack. And then at some point it was using like Snow build or Snowpack. And then we started using like Grunt and Gulp. 
it's just a never ending cycle of like BS, dare I say, that to basically cover up the smells of the ecosystem versus I think Go was just designed from the get go of like, this is good engineering. And by the way, I do want to point out that I have a Next.js starter kit. If you do still want to use Next.js, even though I've been bashing the entire ecosystem, where I'm basically making videos to walk you through all of the code base of the starter kit. The starter kit is all free MIT, um, but I do plan to make a bunch of videos to explain this code base. Um, again, no hate towards Next.js. I have actually made some decent money using Next.js, so I'm not going to write it off. But I just wanted to give that little plug right there um, since you're still listening, hopefully. Now, I think another thing that really triggered my mindset change a little bit was HTMX. I, I know HTMX seems like a meme, but the more you think about it, like the fact that if you write Go and you can achieve this much performance increase by just switching to Go, you are going to take a hit in terms of your client side interactivity. And if you end up having to pull in Vue or Svelte or React or Next or whatever to achieve client-side functionality, it just doesn't feel right. Now, one of the things that makes HTMX so appealing, again, is that all of the heavy lifting and power of Go can generate your templates and send them over from the back end to the front end. Now, this isn't new. I mean, we've been doing this forever in the industry. But the idea is that like, can you achieve more with less? Can you achieve the same or close to the same front end client side functionality without having to write any JavaScript at all? And I think HTMX kind of provides that. Now, currently that's kind of the mindset and ideology I wanted to kind of follow for a little bit right now. Um, I just, just want to experiment. Like, can I achieve a nice enough user experience where I still have all the benefits of using Go. I still have all the benefits of showing spinners and interaction and dynamically swapping out things on the page without having to bring in all this bloat that's associated with TypeScript and the JavaScript ecosystem. Now, I'll be completely honest. This thing was hyped up maybe like a year ago by like Primogen and a bunch of other people. And I think it's kind of cooled off since then. But I am honestly thinking about using HTMX and Go for a lot of my content in the future. So if you want to stick around on my channel, and still learn about TypeScript and Next.js, I will still publish that type of content because I don't want to just completely kill off all my channel. But again, this is more of like a mindset change that's happened to me. I've been coding for almost 10 plus years and I'm just getting to the point where it's like, I just want to be able to ship code and not worry about Next.js's 50 caching rules or worry about using unstable no store, unstable cache, or another version update with Next.js that's going to break something or change the way we have to do stuff, or React 19 bringing out a new compiler I have to think about and use. It's like, what if I could just put two tags on an HTML element, and when you click it, automatically have this button show an indicator, and then when it's done, my Go API sends over HTML, which I can swap out in the front end, and achieve 90% of the same functionality that I have seen all throughout my career. Most of the stuff that I've used AngularJS and Angular and React and Vue for, it's literally, here's a form, submit it, process some data, send some data back. Like that is literally what I've been doing for 10 plus years. And your mileage may vary. Like if you're on a project that's building like Eraser IO or you're building Excaladrol, then yeah, you're going to have to get more into the JavaScript side of things. But for most of what I built in this industry and what a lot of people build as well is literally here's a form, submit it, process it, send something back. And again, I think we need to start thinking of the mindset of can we achieve 90% or 95% of the interactivity that our designers ask for or that our business asks for by using like 50% less code or 50% less complexity or 75% less third party services. Because the more you keep tacking onto this, it's just like a gear cog that you keep adding gears. And the moment one of those gears breaks or becomes deprecated, you end up spending more time trying to update that stuff or swap it out instead of actually shipping functionality. So that's my talk. Um, again, don't be scared. I'm still going to make Next.js content. I have like two legit projects using Next.js, so I'm not going to just abandon them. Like, like Project Planner AI, completely written with Next.js. So yeah, I'm not going to just abandon it. But I just wanted to kind of put that idea into your head, especially if you're like a beginner, to have that mindset. Can you achieve the same functionality with using less dependencies, using less memory, using less complexity, less third-party services, less cloud providers, 
and still achieve what you need. Okay. Have a good day. Happy coding.